WWE has an expansive history and due to the company producing hours upon hours of content on a weekly basis for several decades, there are truly some crazy facts and statistics about WWE and their talent both past and present. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 15 WWE facts that sound fake but are actually 100% true. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 15, Cody Rhodes once lost a match to himself. A Cody Rhodes holds a rather unique accomplishment when it comes to his WWE career. At the 2008 Night of Champions event, Rhodes walked into the match as one half of the World Tag Team Champions alongside Hardcore Holly, and the team was set to face Ted DiBiase Jr. and a mystery opponent. The mystery opponent turned out to be Rhodes himself, and Rhodes would turn on Holly, allowing him and DiBiase to become the new World Tag Team Champions. This meant that in theory, Rhodes lost a match to himself on pay-per-view. Number 14, John Cena is not a Grand Slam Champion. Whilst John Cena is one of the most decorated and celebrated wrestlers in WWE history, believe it or not, he's not actually considered to be a Grand Slam Champion. Due to Cena failing to ever win the Intercontinental title, this means that WWE don't consider Cena as a Grand Slam Champion. Due to the WWE legend being semi-retired, it seems unlikely that Cena will ever be in the hunt for the title, but it would be a fitting final storyline for Cena to try and reach Grand Slam status in WWE. Number 13, The Miz's Atrocious Pay-Per-View Main Event Record for over a decade, The Miz has been one of the WWE's most featured stars. The Miz has had a number of title reigns, including two reigns with the WWE title. Despite The Miz's obvious success, there is a crazy statistic when it comes to The Miz in his pay-per-view main event. The Miz throughout his entire WWE career has only won two pay-per-view main events. The first of these came at WrestleMania 27 when he defeated John Cena to retain the title, and the second of these came in 2021 when he cashed in on Drew McIntyre at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view to win the WWE title for the second time. Number 12, Pete Dunne's real name. A former NXT UK champion Pete Dunne aka Butch is one of the most successful stars to come out of England. Dunne is considered to be an elite in-ring talent and when you learn what Dunne's real name is, you'll immediately think it's a rib. A Dunne's real name is Peter Thomas England. Yeah, that's right, Dunn has the most English name possible. If Dunn ever does a gimmick that focuses on his nationality, then the WWE could look to rebrand Dunn using his real life name, as it would literally be a perfect fit. Number 11, the WrestleMania 19 main event. WrestleMania 19 holds a special place in the heart of many WWE fans. The show itself is considered to be a standout WrestleMania event, and the main event featuring Brock Lesnar vs Kurt Angle was a fitting close to a stellar show. Interestingly, the main event matchup between Lesnar and Angle is the only WrestleMania event to date featuring two wrestlers using their real-life name. Due to WWE renaming virtually all of their talent, the chances of this ever happening again are probably next to impossible. Number 10, Jake the Snake Roberts is actually scared of snakes. Jake the Snake Roberts has one of the most popular and beloved gimmicks ever. It's hard to imagine Roberts delivering another gimmick outside of him coming to the ring with a menacing snake. A logic would assume that Roberts has a passion and admiration for snakes, but shockingly that's not true. During an appearance on WWE's Most Wanted Treasures, the Hall of Famer revealed that he's legitimately scared of snakes, but he was always able to hide the fear when portraying his popular character. I'm afraid of snakes and WWE tried to hire somebody to teach me how to deal with the snakes and I blew them off. The first time that I touched the snake was the first time I had to pick it up in the ring. But there's something that happens to me when I walk out the door. Because once that bell rings, I did that transformation to Jake the Snake. No problem. Jake's not afraid of anybody. Even snakes. Number 9. Randy Orton once used CM Punk's iconic theme song. A CM Punk's This Fire Burns theme song is one of the most replayable theme songs that WWE have ever used, but before Punk debuted the song, another former world champion would use the track. Randy Orton would use the song for one week on SmackDown, and it was certainly an odd fit. The song didn't suit Orton in any capacity, and it was later decided that the theme song would instead be used for CM Punk. WWE would also reuse the theme as a theme song for 2006 Judgment Day pay-per-view, which was a welcome move as it was a perfect fit for a pay-per-view theme. Number 8. Kelly Kelly once defended the world title 
A former Divas champion, Kelly Kelly, had several key roles during her career, and in one particular match, she actually defended Edge's world title. Kelly would team with Edge to take on Lay Cool and Dolph Ziggler in a 2 on 3 handicap match, and this put a huge spotlight on Kelly to deliver. The finish of the match came when Kelly performed a spear on Layla, which in turn allowed Edge to retain the world title. Number 7. Paul Bearer was a legitimate mortician. Now, in terms of iconic managers in WWE, the late great Paul Bearer is up there with the very best. Bearer joining forces with The Undertaker was an ingenious pairing, and it's hard to imagine the dead man's career being the same if he didn't have Bearer by his side during his early days. A truly crazy fact about Bearer is that when he was selected to be the dead man's manager, he was already a licensed mortician. Bearer legitimately had a degree in mortuary science from San Antonio College. This was an unbelievable coincidence, but it was a sign that Bearer was a perfect man for the pivotal role. Number 6. WrestleMania 1 took place in the afternoon. WrestleMania 1 was arguably the most important event in WWE history, and whilst the event took place in Madison Square Garden, WWE simply wasn't the priority for the Garden during the day of the inaugural WrestleMania. WrestleMania 1 took place in the afternoon, and the main reason for this was because there was a special basketball event set to take place in the evening, and the crew at MSG had to clean up the arena ready for the next show. This would be a stark contrast to what WrestleMania would become for venues and cities. Whilst the first WrestleMania seems like an inconvenience for MSG, fast forward to almost four decades later and WrestleMania is one of the most profitable and successful events in the world. Number 5. Vladimir Kozlov pinned The Undertaker clean between 2008 to 2009, WWE seemed insistent on making Vladimir Kozlov a top heel in the company. In a daring attempt to achieve this, they did the unthinkable and had Kozlov pin the dead man clean as a whistle on SmackDown. This was an outcome that nobody saw coming and the finish left fans completely bewildered. The finish saw the dead man attempt old school only for Kozlov to counter it into a basic power slam. It was insane to think that this move once pinned the most iconic figures in WWE history. Number 4. Batista is older than Triple H When Evolution formed, it was portrayed that Randy Orton and Batista were the young stars of the faction. This was the case with Orton, but Batista was shockingly older than Triple H by a few months. When the two feuded in 2005, the feud was presented as an old school versus new school rivalry, and Batista seemed to be considerably younger than the game, but that simply wasn't the case. Number 3. Goldberg won the world title in four different decades Although Goldberg hasn't been a full-time talent for most of his career, the WWE Hall of Famer has achieved a noteworthy accomplishment. Goldberg has amazingly won a world title in four separate decades. Goldberg won the WCW title in the 90s. In the 2000s, he won the WWE World title. In the 2010s, Goldberg won the Universal title. And finally, in the 2020s, Goldberg once again captured the Universal title. This is truly a crazy statistic and sounds completely fabricated, but it's 100% true. Number 2. Michael Cole has a higher win percentage at WrestleMania than The Undertaker the Undertaker's WrestleMania win streak is one of the most notable and well-known streaks in wrestling. Even though the dead man's win streak is going to be celebrated forever, one individual has a better win percentage than the dead man at WrestleMania, and that's Michael Cole. Cole has competed in one WrestleMania event that came in 2011 when he wrestled Jerry the King Lawler in an atrocious match at WrestleMania 27. Cole won this match via DQ, meaning he has a 100% record at WrestleMania. Since Cole has seemingly hung up his boots indefinitely, it seems like this statistic will remain factually correct forever. And number 1. Mick Foley, Man of the Year The Attitude Era was arguably the WWE's most popular time. The product was absolutely everywhere and it truly became a fundamental part of the late 90s pop culture. One of the most popular stars in the beloved era was Mick Foley, aka Mankind, and Foley's popularity was on full display during 1998. In that year, Time Magazine ran a poll to determine the man of the year, and Attitude Era fans decided to flock to the site and vote for Foley, which gave him an astronomical lead. Time Magazine officials would later disqualify Foley from voting, stating that he hadn't done anything worthy to warrant being awarded with the prestigious title. But there you have it folks, 15 WWE facts that sound fake, but actually 100% true. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.